Hi, everybody. Welcome to a faculty lecture with Ken Podolik. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I come from the State University of New York at Plattsburgh. It's one of the 64 University of New York uh, campuses. Uh, Plattsburgh is a very far Northeast campus, way up in the corner, uh, nestled between Vermont, Canada, and New York. So I'm way up there. And I am pleased to uh, talk with you today about DC circuits, shockingly irresistible. Hope you all enjoy. So, so today's topic, I'm going to go through a lot of maybe what you've seen, but give you maybe a little more insight into some of these topics. And uh, I'm looking through circuit terminology, including resistivity, a brief uh, discussion about resistivity. Uh, then I'll go into Ohm's law, resistors in series and parallel. And then finally, we'll go into Kirchhoff's laws, uh, junction rule, loop rule, um, you know, go through some more details into those uh, laws. So uh, if you're studying physics uh, in general, some of these topics may appeal to you. Uh, this would be a great lesson to go through, brush up on your uh, different topics and see how you do. So won't you join me today and let's see what's going on. So the first thing I wanna get into is some current events and <laughs> specifically current. And uh, when we talk about current, uh, we think about uh, the analogy of water through a pipe. I know it's a very common analogy. Maybe you've heard this one before, but let me explain a little bit what I know about it. Uh, if you think of water flowing through a pipe, it is very similar to what electrical current is. So if you think of like the flow of the water of like how the water gets from point A to point B, then that is very similar to um, electrical circuits. So you may have like a hose and you, know, you kind of play with that. Uh, in the summertime and you know you got the water flowing out there of your hose so kind of fun times and uh, the flow or how much water comes out of that hose depends upon how many molecules are coming out like you know the amount of water as well as how fast they're moving and that is the same analog to electrical circuits uh, when you're dealing with current now current is the measured in coulombs per second instead of um, water molecules per second so current depends about the number of charges or electrons and how fast they are moving. Uh, the general formula we will use is I equals delta Q over delta T. I is our current measured in amps. So, and then the delta Q is the amount of charge. You may have studied this um, in another part of a unit. It is measured in coulombs. So you wanna measure the Q in coulombs. You might remember that one electronic charge equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So uh, when you have unbalanced amount of charge, that's how many coulombs you may have. And then um, again, how fast they're moving the time interval for delta Q over T. So a coulomb per second is an amp. So, all right, cool. So we'll put that aside for now <laughs> and get and get and talk about something else that goes on in circuits, uh, which is resistance and resistivity. Uh, these are not the same thing. I mean, a lot of times when I go through this, uh, you might think of like resistance and resistivity. Ah, it sounds similar. It's probably the same thing. They are very different terms. And so this slide will help explain a little bit about what's different between resistance and resistivity. And uh, when you think about that, you think about the word resistance, you must, it's basically impeding the flow of that current. You're trying to stop that. Uh, summertime, you might imagine you put your finger over that hose to try to spray somebody, you know, you try to put that finger over the hose and water comes out really fast. Um, so if you're thinking about the terminologies of what is in resistance, um, we want to think about what would you need to have uh, the least resistance to current flow. Um, and then if you think about uh, two different pipes, maybe you have one that's say a large area, something like this, and something that's got a small area. Now, which of these do you think would have the least resistance to current flow? So, and I would think that if you have a very large pipe, it has uh, very, very little resistance. It would just kind of go right through, you know, you're not impeding the water as much as it can get through as possible, right? And then if you want low resistance, another term you could think about is the length. So what if you had a short pipe, right? Versus a very long pipe, okay? Excuse my handwriting, sometimes it's a little sloppy. <laughs> now, if you want a least resistance, uh, you wanna not impede it for very long. So you want a smaller length 
to kind of get things going. And thereby saying that when you develop this pipe, this is the kind of terminology you're gonna use. And so when you look at this equation finally down here, it has those relations built right into it. So the resistance of the pipe is equal to uh, this term length in the numerator. Again, the um, longer length has got more resistance, right? Shorter length, least resistance. And then the bigger the area has the uh, smaller resistance. So, uh, so big A in the denominator means a smaller resistance in the numerator, right? And then there's this extra constant term and that's what's called the resistivity. It's the Greek letter rho, or as my students like to call it, the curly P, but you know, it's called rho. And uh, the resistivity, what we're gonna talk about here is it's a property of the material and it changes with temperature. There's more detail here, right? This is not the only thing that you should you can know about resistivity, but in general speaking, when we're going through this, uh, just know that different materials have different resistivities. If you have the same material for a bunch of stuff, it all has the same resistivity and that increasing or decreasing temperature can affect the resistivity. And we're just gonna leave it at that. There's more detail, but that's where we're gonna leave it at. And when we draw these, uh, resistivity of these like bars that have this area and length. Uh, this picture would be great. It gets a little sloppy and times and it's kind of cumbersome. So what I like to do, which uh, most people do is draw this for the resistance. So it's a nice little jagged up and down line there. So, so that's how it works. So, okay. All right. So I wanted to talk briefly about this. There's historical circumstances that's kind of sort of unfortunate when you're studying uh, this, but there's something called the electromotive force and the potential difference or the voltage, okay? The electromotive force is called that for historical circumstances. If you go back and study a lot of history books about why they call it this, but it is not a force. I know it's hard to imagine we've been studying this stuff and it's like forces, I got forces. That has the word force, but the EMF or the electromotive force is not a force. Uh, it, it talks about the energy expended during the passing of charges through sources, but it's not a force. It is uh, actually uh, very similar to the electric potential difference or voltage. The subtle differences uh, we're not gonna cover at this point, uh, in the course, the EMF will be written by a curly E. You'll see that as a term. Uh, and then the energy transferred during two different, any two different points, that's what's called the potential difference or the voltage. So when you have a, a measurement of it across something, or you try to show this is the voltage here, then that's the, that's the value or whatever that we're gonna use. So somewhat they can be interchangeable. They're not exactly the same definition, but, um, but that's what I like to tell my students about these two terms, so. Okay, so here's a big moment. So in physics, if I talk about formulas of these key equations that you remember many years after you study physics, uh, some people will say like F equals MA. That's a formula that they're very familiar with and have studied physics. Um, I'd like to put this one up on that, that, that pillar there of just like one of these formulas that uh, it's like, oh yeah, I kind of remember studying this one, uh, but there's so much subtlety to it. And so hopefully by today or during other studies, you'll kind of get the, how subtle and the differences that this Ohm's law really works. So uh, what we have in Ohm's law is the voltage across or potential difference, many materials produces a current and the proportionality between the potential difference and the current is the resistance. So we have here this Delta V equals IR, that's Ohm's law. And you're like, wow, it's three letters. That's gonna, remember how hard Ohm's law, or um, remember how hard uh, Newton's law was sometimes in all the little subtle things? Kind of like that. There's a lot of different places we could use Ohm's law. And that constant proportionality is the resistance that we've been talking about, okay? So we know the units here, we got the Delta V as in volts. The current is measured in amps, remember, coulombs per second. The resistance will be measured in ohms. And what ohms are, it's like the uh, horseshoe or the lucky charms kind of thing I talk about in class. Uh, that's your unit of ohms. You'll see that all the time for resistance. And uh, 
the, this resistance, you can go with voltage over current. You get one volt over one amp is the ohm, okay? So, you know, if you think about it, you know, what would the voltage say to the current? Hi, Omis, how you doing? So, you know, <laughs> anyway, so I always think that, you know, the ohm looks kind of boring. You know, if I put sunglasses on it, it probably looked more like a cool ohm. No, maybe. No. So anyway, but we'll so I'll talk a lot about the uh, subtleties of how to use this equation coming up in the lesson. So now on to electrical power. So electrical power is the same terminology that we use back in mechanics. It's the time rate change of energy. Uh, so the units of watts are still the units of power. It's still one joule per one second. Um, however, when you have a circuit of electrical current, you could define the power in terms of the current times the change in voltage there. Power equals I delta V. And if that's not enough, you could represent it in three different ways. You may have seen this. It's three formulas in one. How is that possible? Well, plug in Ohm's law and you get three different equations. Seems kind of uh, crazy. So it's like, you're kind of looking at it like, oh man, I gotta know how to use three different power equations? Kinda, I mean, really, if you just know one of those equations in Ohm's law, you can get to the other two or just look them up in your tables in your book or um, on the back of formula sheets. So um, so those are the three different formulas for power. Um, there's something I'm forgetting. What is it? What is it? Oh, never mind. It's the, uh, it's the power, <laughs> a power and brightness. So uh, brightness is something that people talk a lot about, like which bulb is brighter? And in general, in the physics classes I've had, I always tell students power is proportional to the brightness of the light bulbs or the resistors, okay? There's more to it. <laughs> but as far as this course goes and what we're gonna look for, if you see questions asking about brightness, I'm gonna look for power on those devices. And I wanna see which one has the most power consumed. That's why we're studying this stuff. So uh, it's also very practical. I think about looking at light bulbs and you wanna see like, okay, which one would be the brightest? So. so let's look at an example about which one is brighter here. And this will kind of help with the, the differences between the power formulas. So let's say we have a nine volt battery connected to one light bulb and then a different nine volt battery connected to another light bulb, but this one's got twice the resistance. And I want to know which light bulb will be brighter. Okay, so I'm looking for power, right? Okay, so brightness is power. And I'm thinking about power formulas. And remember, I have three of them. I have I delta V. I have my I squared R. And I have my delta V squared over R. Okay. Those are the three I introduced. Again, maybe you have to go back and watch those again or figure out where they are on your sheets, but uh, there they are. And then the question is always, which one is it? Like they're, they're all power. Aren't they all right? They are. But if we're looking for proportionalities, we got to figure out what's the constant term here? Like what can I say is the same for all my circuits? And if you look here, it's the voltage of the batteries. I have two of the same batteries of voltage in each of these examples, right? So my delta V for this example is the same. And if my delta V is the same, then I can look at the, which, how the resistance changes the equation. So which one of these formulas would I choose? I'm gonna choose the third one. Does that make the second one wrong? Absolutely not. It's not a wrong formula. It's just that you can't really talk about it in this example because there's different currents. So the I is changing and the R is changing. It's just a mess. It's much easier to talk about it with this equation right here, right? So if the voltage is the same, and this is something that uh, my students struggle with, if the voltage is the same, I don't need to plug in numbers always to figure out how things change. I could just look at how it relates proportionally. So if this is the same and I put twice the resistance in the denominator, it's like plugging in a two for the R. So I could say that if I plug in a two for the R, one squared over two, 
like PO or the original power or the P of the first one. This is the first circuit, you know, this is the second circuit. You can see that it's just going to be half of the amount of power. So by doubling the resistance, you put a plug in a two there and you get that there's half amount of, amount of power. Now, if you don't like this and you're just like, I've never seen this kind of plug-in kind of method and it scares me, don't worry, go through it numerically. I mean, if you don't have a number like, oh, there's like twice the resistance, uh, he didn't give me a number, put in two numbers, put in like two ohms for the first one, four for the next one. It'll take a little longer, but I think you'll start to prove to yourself as you get more comfortable of handling uh, proportional relations that, you get quicker on the, the, the buzzer with this one, but, um, but you know, go ahead and uh, play with it. And if you need to plug in some numbers, it's fine. So, okay. Okay, so let's look at a simple circuit first and talk about some of the issues I find when people start studying these things and looking at it. So here's what it looks like more schematically on the left where you have just like a, a battery, like a AAA battery maybe, and a resistance or some sort of light bulb that this is a schematic of what it might look like. That's the same as the circuit diagram over here on the right. So what you have here is you have your battery, which is symbolized by a long wire, a long line and a short line. Okay. The long line is the positive side. On the other side, I like to consider it zero volts. Okay, is it a potential difference? So if I say plus four is on one side, I'll say zero volts is on the other side. Um, and then you have the four ohm resistor, which is symbolized by over here. And then the question uh, I wanna ask first is, which way does the current flow? Okay, so this is something that, uh, you know, unfortunately convention is not the way that you would hope. Um, we know that electrons are what is flowing. And so uh, what you would, traditionally think is that you would have the negative electrons flowing out of the negative side or the zero side terminal of the battery and coming around the circuit this way, okay? But what we're gonna do, which everybody else does, is we assume a positive current flow that goes around like this, okay? Now, you it's like, well, that's weird because it's not positive charges moving, true but we all talk about positive currents and that's what, when we go forward to analyze all of our circuits, that's how it's gonna look. So, um, so we're gonna have to just kind of know little secrets in our back of our mind. Like we all know it's electrons flowing the other way, but we're just gonna go with the eye going uh, in the clockwise fashion. Okay, sound good, all right. Now, the other question uh, people trip up on is number two. Uh, well, I write my answer for number one here, clockwise. That's clockwise, how it goes around. Okay, so number two, it says, what is larger, the current flowing into the resistor or out of the resistor? A lot of people want to look at this and say that, oh man, you know, you have like a ton of current and then out of the, the resistor, there's like nothing because it all like stopped it because it's resistive. That's not the case. Think about how when you have that water in your hose, once the hose is full, every drop at the beginning is the same as a drop out. They all kind of it pushes its way through. It's not it's the same, but it's, you know, that's what's going on here. It's like one leads to the next. So if there's just one path, there's just one current. There isn't any more at the beginning or the end. What you might be thinking of is maybe the potential difference because that's kind of like an energy. So, uh, but for this purpose here, uh, what is larger, the current into or out of the resistor, they're the same. There's no other path. So there is the exact same current into and out of that resistor, okay? Uh, and we can calculate that if we want to with Ohm's law. This one's a kind of a nice one. Uh, and now I wanted to graph the electric potential changes as you go around the circuit. So uh, just to show you how the voltage changes as you go through. Now, if you're starting at the, right at this point here, that's like starting um, right before the battery. So maybe up over here, it's right here, okay. So um, actually probably closer to here because it's gonna go through the battery first. And as it goes through the battery, it gains that electric potential. So as it goes through the battery, it starts at zero, goes up to four volts, 
and I would just draw a straight line. You can draw straighter. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Um, but it's going to be a straight line up to about the four volt line. Then through the wires. Now we're going to assume in every circuit that every wire is just like a carrier and has no resistance. I know it probably has a little bit, but compared to the resistors and other things, it has almost none. So we're just going to draw a horizontal line here, assuming that it doesn't really change the, the uh, potential, the voltage. And then at this point here, we can now say that it goes through the resistor and it drops it. So it drops the potential from the four volts down to zero. And then finally at the bottom wire, it just kind of goes across all the way through the bottom wire until it gets to the battery and then we repeat. So, okay. If I were to draw the current, same everywhere. The current is the same to the whole thing. It's going to be one amp, four volts over four ohms. I equals the delta V over R. That's Ohm's law. Again, rewritten in terms of current. I could do that and figure out one amp and it's one amp everywhere. It is always going to be that four volts over four ohms, one amp. So, okay. All right, cool. How do we measure these things? Uh, well, there's voltmeters and ammeters. Hopefully you've had the pleasure of, of doing this in one of your labs. And uh, this is the interesting thing about it is that a voltmeter is connected between two points. We call, about, call it the potential difference across something. Uh, so if you wanted to measure the voltage across this resistor, you take two wires, you put it across there, and then you get a voltage measurement. When you have an ammeter, those have to be connected in the line of the circuit. So you'd have two different like electrical leads and you have to put the ammeter into your circuit. So you break it, you put it in, and then you close it. So a question I have for you all is, which one of these do you think has a very low resistance? And which one of these do you think has a very high resistance if we wanna make a measurement? Okay. And I could tell you by design, the voltmeter here, we do not want very much current to go through it. We don't wanna disturb our circuit and drastically change it. So if we don't wanna change that circuit very much, the answer is that this resistance must be very high. High-ish, usually in the mega ohms, if you're having a practical voltmeter, um, and that's usually much higher than other resistances in the circuit, but um, that's generally very high. When you're looking at an ammeter, if you're thinking about the resistance of that, the ammeter, of course, will have a very low resistance now, the opposite, okay? And this is why if you've ever been in a physics lab, People always worry about you making ammeter or current measurements. You may ask yourself like, well, why can't I just measure the current? Well, because that resistance is so low that basically if you connect it haphazardly or in the wrong way, you could blow the ammeter and basically you have to change the fuses or uh, you know, you could ruin the circuit board depending on how egregious this is. Um, so it's much more protective to kind of protect your ammeter. Uh, voltmeters generally, uh, since you're not putting them in the circuit, it's got a high resistance. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, so. Okay, so let's put some resistors together and let's see what happens. You know, everything's good when it all comes together. You know, it's nice. And so there's two kinds of ways we could wire things together. The first way is called series wiring, okay? What series wiring is, it looks something like this. And what happens is that you go through one resistor and then you must go through the next resistor. There is no split paths, no alternate secret doors or dev routes. You have to go through one and then the next, okay? That's, that's a series connection right there. And if you have a series connection, um, you can derive this all, or you can just think about it that as you add up more resistors, you're just making things quote unquote longer. So, or resisting it more. So you're just basically gonna add them all up. If you have three of them, add three of them together in series. If you have 12 of them, add up all 12 of them. It's pretty nice, I like that math. Um, and then the other thing to know about resistors in series is that the currents are gonna be the same through each of the series resistors. There's no 
as I said, dev route. You have to go through both of the resistors. So therefore, the currents here, well, there's no third one, but the current through the first one has to be the same as the current through the second one. The currents must match in a series uh, circuit. So I is the same through series. resistors. I Current is the same through series. That's the way I remember it. You have series resistors, the current must be the same. Okay. Here's the alternate. Can't be just one thing, right? Parallel wiring. Okay, so what is parallel wiring about? Parallel, parallel means that you have a choice of path, okay? So if you look at this example here, let's look at this point right here. You come out here, everybody's happy. Oh no, two different ways you can go. Um, I like doing this diagonal thing because it's kind of harder to imagine sometimes, but people draw it differently all the time. Uh, but what you have here is you have parallel wiring. Now parallel wiring, you can either go through this resistor and get to this red dot, or you can go the long route and come back to this red dot. Okay, two different paths that'll get you from one side of the battery to the other. That is textbook parallel wiring. Okay. So the 10 and the 20 ohm resistors as labeled are definitely parallel wiring. Okay. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the formula was nice? Unfortunately, the formula is a little bit messier. Uh, I'm going to rewrite it up here because uh, inevitably it's easy to mess up, but it's a one over the first resistance plus one over the second resistance and if you have more, you can keep going. Uh, and that equals one over the R parallel, the combination of the two uh, making a parallel resistance, okay? Uh, be careful your numbers here. It's very easy to make mistakes in your calculator or when you're going through trying to figure out what one resistance would make a bunch of these resistors in parallel. Uh, my suggestion is write out all your work, use parentheses, and then just look at the number, okay? If you got a 10 and a 20 ohm resistor, and you're telling me that the parallel is like 0 0.005. Does that make sense that like, it's really that small? You know, probably not, you know? So there might be some math errors or something that goes on uh, when you do this. Always in a parallel wiring, it's a little less than the resistors, but it's not like crazy less, okay? So that's a good mental check on when you're doing parallel wiring and trying to see, do you have the right number for our parallel? It's usually a little less than what you're given, but not like crazy less. If it's crazy less, did you forget a one over somewhere? You know, check your math, figure it out, see what's going on. So now I said current is the same through series. In parallel, it is the voltages that are the same. Okay. Without uh, deriving it, I'm just going to say that the electric potential voltages are the same. And that should make sense because if you're starting up here at nine volts for this battery, and down here, let's say it goes to zero volts, then you have to use up, <laughs> go through the same amount of voltage through the 20 ohm as that 10 ohm. You have to go through the same amount of voltage, okay? The currents will be different, but the voltage is going to be the same in parallel resistors, okay? So it's a mantra, I say, Current is the same through series. Voltage is the same through parallel. And I just say that to myself. Current is the same through series. Voltage is the same through parallel. Okay. The more you hear it, the more it'll make sense. And you just kind of repeat that. And it kind of goes through it. And it, you know, these are things that aren't really on formula sheets that you have to kind of just know when you tackle some of these circuits. All right. So let's do a ranking task. Um, this one I like a lot because it really tests your logic between, uh, behind this stuff. So I have a bunch of different circuits here. You can look and see beautifully at these pictures. Uh, but I'm gonna say that each resistor has the same amount of resistance and the batteries all have the same voltage, okay? So identical batteries, identical resistors. I just number them because I gotta talk about which one I'm dealing with. So they're numbered, but assume they all have the same resistance. And I wanna know what, rank the amount of currents, um, let's go least the greatest from each of these resistors and talk about what kind of currents are going through each one, okay? 
So if you look at these, this is kind of interesting. This one here on the left, just a one resistor and one battery, right? So that one's pretty cool. So I could just go through and say, ah, that one's just I equals E over R1. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Now here you got your series in the middle, you got your parallel on the right. So hopefully you've seen those earlier and you kind of quickly sell, like, hey, wait, those are those. Yeah, these, this is the series, that's a parallel. So when I think about that, remember I'm going for current is the same through series, voltage is the same through parallel, okay? It doesn't say whether it's more or less current, it just says it's the same. So these two have the same current, these two have the same voltage, uh, four and five, okay? Now, if four and five have the same voltage, there's only one battery and R4 and R5 connected to it. So therefore, for each one of these, they must have the same uh, current, I, E over R4, E over R5. So I4, I5, which are the currents through four and five, as well as one, all have to be the same, okay? So you might ask yourself, then what's different about, what's different about that one on the right then? If they all have the same current, how's that possible? Well, if I talk about the battery's current, then we pull their story. The battery on the right there has got to be putting out a lot more current. So it supplies to both resistors rather than just the one on the left there. Okay. That's just a little, yeah, inside thing. Okay. So now we go to the middle one. And so one, four, and five are the same. I figured it out with Ohm's law. I got my knowledge there. They're going to be the same, but what about two and three? Okay. So with two and three, uh, there's a couple ways you can think about this. And by all means, if you have an alternate way to think about it and it, it makes sense to you, go for it. Um, but what you can do is you can figure out that, well, the current out of the battery is going to be the same as the current through each one of those. And for this circuit here, the I2 or the I3 will equal the EMF of the battery over the net resistance. Not just each one, because if you think of it, the entire circuit, it's got to go through both. It's going to be R2 plus R3, okay? It's got to be both of them combined in series to make that one current come out. Now, because of that, we could say that like, oh, okay, then this has got more resistance in the denominator. And if it's got more resistance in the denominator, that means its current must be less, okay? So this one here has got the least amount of current because it has the most amount of resistance. So if I was to rank them, I would say the I of two equals the I of three, and that's gotta be less than the I of one, which goes through resistor one, which equals I of four, which equals I of five. And that's kind of how I would rank those. So hopefully you agree with me. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. All right, so here's more of a, a number number cruncher here because I know people like to plug in numbers and see stuff. Uh, but I like this one because I think it's not quite as quick on the buzzer as you want it to be. So let's take a look at this one. Looks simple, right? Nine volt battery, a 10 and 20 ohm resistor. And then we wanna know what is the electric potential drop across the 10 ohm resistor and the power dissipated by that resistor? Uh, Looks like I accidentally put an extra sig fig there. Um, so let's not worry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna figure out the electric potential drop across here. Okay, we got a battery. Hmm. Uh, let's see, is it nine volts? No, it can't be nine volts because some of the voltage will be here and some of it will be here. So, Huh, how do I get not how do I get the voltage here? Well, what I could do is I know my series stuff, right? So let's start with that. Say I of this or the resistance of the series. Whoops. Let's start with the res the resistance in series. So let's say that we have the R of the series. And that's just going to be the 10 ohm plus the 20 ohm. So it's 30 ohms, right? Nice. 
Okay, so I can figure out now what the current is because the current coming out of the battery is just gonna be the EMF over the resistance in series, the total resistance, right? Because it's the total coming out. So I would do nine volts over 30 ohms. Sometimes I like to make my voltages with the uh, sidelines. I call them my Wonder Woman Vs or the Van Halen Vs, uh, if you guys like that, because velocity is V and that kind of gets really confusing sometimes when you see different Vs. So I draw my little sticks on top. Hopefully you uh, are okay with that. So, um, so I got my nine over 30 and I get 0 0.3 amps. Now I can figure out what's going on here. So the electric potential drop across that 10 ohm resistor is just going to be delta V, which is going to be equal to IR. The current out of the battery is the current through that resistor. So I have 0.3 amps times uh, oops, 10 ohms. It's now 10, not 30. <laughs> Gotta be careful. It's now on the 10 ohm only. So therefore 10 times 0.3 is going to be three volts, okay? So three volts would have been dropped across this one. And if you calculate it out or just know the difference is six volts would be on the other one because you have nine volts total, three plus six is nine. So, so my answer to part A will be three volts. And then the power dissipated by that resistor you know all the values actually right now. You know that the three volts, 10 ohms, and you know 0.3 amps is through the whole circuit. So really any formula would work fine uh, that you have been using for power. Um, so I can do I squared R possibly just as to vary it up, you know, change the game a little bit. So 0.3 amps squared times my resistance of 10 ohms, gotta be careful, you know, like it's only that resistors stuff, not the total here. So I do 0.3 squared times 10 and I get zero point nine watts, right? Yeah, okay, good. And those are the answers to part A and B. I was just double checking my math here, making sure everything works out. And I tried another equation. Sure enough, it gave me the same number. So that made me happy. So good. We did it. So having fun yet? All right. Let's take a look here. Let's keep going. All right. So this one here is uh, the current law and the voltage law. Now let's talk about Kirchhoff. So uh, there's a couple laws when you're dealing with complicated circuits. Uh, it's got a bunch of stuff in here, uh, but there's uh, a couple of rules we use to make some equations. And so the current law basically is current in equals current out, okay? Um, you have to draw in the currents or look at the direction of which way the currents are in the diagram. And then you would basically say for this example here on the right-hand side, the I1 is coming in, I2 and three are coming out. So you get I1 equals I2 plus I3. Now I wanna say that this works for this one here, but by all means, do not write this down as like, this is the only way Kirchhoff's current law works and this is the only equation. It depends on the diagram, right? Or how the currents are in your circuit. This is just one way to draw it. So please don't just write this one down as like, this is the only way that the formula is ever gonna look. It could look very different in various ways. Uh, but for this one, 11 amps in, 7 amps out, 4 amps out, makes sense. So uh, the loop rule or the voltage law is a little bit different. Uh, it has got to work on the conservation of energy of electrical circuits, basically saying that if you go around the whole circuit, you basically have the closed loop of zero and all your electric potentials or voltages add up to zero with positives and negatives all taken into consideration. Okay, so there's a couple of rules of how we're gonna deal with this. And so here's the diagram that I'm gonna use. Uh, if you have a resistor and we're traveling with it and the direction of travel is just like which way we're going around. It's not the direction of the current. It's just like, which way do we choose to go around? And so if we choose that direction of travel, Delta V equals minus IR. You get a negative IR 
if you go with it. If you go against it, it's going to be a plus IR. So plus IR for that. And then down here, if you're going with the battery, it's a plus voltage. And if you go against the battery, again, which way you're traveling in your circuit, it's going to be a minus voltage. All right, so let's take a look here. This, I'm just gonna set up some equations here to help show you how this works. So for this one here, we have a battery and a bunch of resistors, and I'm gonna draw some loops. I wanna do this loop, this loop, and then the current law. And I'm just gonna write the equations. I'm not gonna solve it right now, uh, but this is how you draw. And sometimes they just ask you to write the equations down. So let's take a look. If we go with this loop here, up the battery will be a plus EMF. So up to the positive side, we are coming here and then we go with the current direction. So it's gonna be minus I2 R1 minus I2 R2. They're both negative because it's going with the direction. Then here you're going also with down here. So it's gonna be minus I1 R4 equals zero. For this loop, we're gonna have minus I3 R3. It's kind of weird to start with a negative, but it is. Now you come up here and like, oh, this is where you're traveling in your loop opposite the current. So therefore it is a plus I2 R2 plus I1 R1, I2, I2 R1, sorry, I2 R1. And that equals zero. You could also write the current law by looking at the currents in and out. I could say I1 equals I3 plus I2. This one happens to be the same, but again, do not count on that always being the same. It could be very different. And then you could take these equations, solve for whatever goodies you need or whatever's missing if it's asked for you. Okay, here's a couple last examples. This one, a little bit more complicated. Uh, if each resistor is 10 ohms and the EMF of the battery is 120 volts, what's the current output by the battery? I even write the answer for you here. Okay, so for this one, how I analyze it is, if I look at the resistors up here, two and three are in series. So you may not see that right away, but if you look at between two and three, you have to add those together to get the net resistance. If you go through three, you must go through two. So the series combination of that is 20 ohms. Okay. Then if you look here, you got a parallel situation where you can go through the, the two and three, or you can go through the four. So our parallel is gonna be one over, one over 20 plus one over 10. Okay. And if you do that, you're gonna get three over 20 or 20 over three ohms. Okay. And then finally, we've dealt with this entire part of the circuit. Some of your teachers may like you to rewrite this as just like a new one resistor. I'm gonna skip that for now. We've dealt with all that. Now we just have this last R1. That's in series with everything else because if you're going through R1, you gotta go through some chunks over here. So therefore the net resistance of the circuit is going to be R1 plus the R parallel. So it's gonna be approximately 16.7 ohms. It's the 10 ohms for the R1 plus roughly the 6.7 ohms for R parallel. That's 20 over three. Okay. Now the current output by the battery, we can just simply do I equals the EMF of the battery over R net, the total resistance. We have 120 volts over 16.7 ohms, and we have our 7.2 amps. And that's how we got that. So, okay, you might need to stop and go back through that one again, or ask yourself how I figured out all these different combinations. So, so for this circuit here, I'm gonna add a resistance R5, and I wanna take a look and see how that extra resistance changes the current in the circuit. Now, I'm not gonna solve the whole thing, I'm just going to put that in there and talk about how it affects the current, okay? So when you add that resistor R5 to the circuit, what it's going to do is provide an extra pathway. So for the resistance of the circuit, 
it's actually going to decrease. It's going to drop the resistance of the circuit. Again, not a deep calculation, but it will drop the current of that, of that circuit. So if it drops the current of the circuit, if we look at I equals E over R, a lowering resistance will actually provide an increase of current by a little bit, you know? So I would say that basically we would have some sort of slight increase because the circuit's resistance will drop a little bit. So by dropping the resistance of the circuit just a little, we get a little bit more current coming out uh, because of the extra pathway. So. so thank you for listening today, bearing through all that. So the take home messages I wanna have for you are that the current is the same through series resistors, the voltage is the same through parallel resistors. Keep that going. Remember those facts. And the Kirchhoff laws, which is the current going into a junction equals the current out of a junction, and that the sum of the voltages around a loop must equal zero. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you do well in your course. Take care, and we'll see you in the next lesson.